Pirates of the R Land. <laughs> I had to say it like that. Listen, I'm not into pirate speak or pirate roleplay, but I do very much enjoy pirate games. I've been playing them all the way since Sid Meier's Pirates on the Nintendo Entertainment System, and more recently, Atlas, which was kind of a spin-off of uh, Ark Survival Evolved. And now, when I saw this, when I, I met with the developers and they, they kind of talked to me about their game, uh, the graphics are beautiful, as you can see. There's a lot of blockchain games and NFT projects that don't have this type of detail. And even though it's very, very early, I want to take you guys on a journey today through this NFT project that is mending on October 29th and show you why I chose to take a sponsored look at this project today. All right, this is actual game footage. So new game, new player. They're going to have an arcade mode to start with and then a play to earn mode that's going to be implemented so we can do some testing and all sorts of stuff first. It's a 3D game, so you'll have your wise the keys to move around and you'll see that it says follow the arrow to gather your first diamond and there's an on-screen indicator as well as some energy bars. So you gotta go around and gather the diamonds. Now this is the first form of gameplay and there's levels that progressively get harder. Your goal is to gather one, well, one more diamond. So you need a few of them specifically. And then once you get enough diamonds, you go through the portal. Now, they have falling rocks as you saw from the volcano that basically they'll kill you. So rocks that explode, they deal damage. And now you can visit the shop as well. So that right now there's no NPCs, but you can buy health potions. And I think it was mana potions there or stamina potions. And there's some of the diamonds that you'll be able to grab. You can actually swim underwater too. I saw some underwater footage and the underwater footage looks really, really clean. But you can tell from the landscape and the graphics, it's already really, really high quality assets. So it says you can open the map too, which I didn't see a preview of. And there's going to be a third person uh, mode as well, but the characters are not rendered yet, but those will be the NFTs. So you just completed level two, and this is some of the underwater footage that I was telling you about. Naturally, there's a shark. <laughs> so this kind of reminds me of Raft when we were going around from there, but the, the different levels have different layouts. And as you can see here, there's a pirate ship in the background, as well as some different little islands and stuff. You can move pretty fast on the water from the looks of it. And it says press E to interact, and it looks like there's a lava and some underground stuff that you'll have to access. Is he, was he on a floating platform in the lava? Okay, some parkour that you'll have to do as well. I think they really got the water graphics done very, very well. Compared to what I've seen in a lot of games like this, the water looks really, really good. And it looks like he look, took a little bit of damage by going over the hot coals. So it's not necessarily when it falls on you. And that looks like a chest, maybe? But look how pretty the lighting is already. And all of the, the, the plants and, and stuff. Now, you'll see in this pirate ship here, there's going to be some cannonballs that can fly out. Yeah, there you go, right there. So this is actually, this going to hurt you if you go in front of it, right? It's going to be pretty cool to see, but the, the, I mean, it's stunning. For a blockchain game, I think it's beautiful. So let's talk about the game a little bit, right? They want to deliver a high quality game combining 3D high quality video games with NFTs. In Pirates of Arland, you'll be able to play your own pirate. If you have more than one, you'll be able to choose between them. So if you mint more than one NFT or you get one, more than one NFT off the secondary market, you'll be able to choose between all of them. And they all have different traits. Now, normally when you see a PFP project on uh, the Ethereum blockchain, for instance, you'll see a bit of traits, like some of their physical traits, what they look like, what kind of hats they wear and stuff like that. But the cool thing about this is each of those traits are going to have some form of ability in the game or some change or statistic manipulation that you'll see. Like heavy pirates will naturally move slower, for instance. Lighter pirates or skinnier pirates may not be able to carry as much, but may be more agile things of that nature. We'll go over those in a minute. They've been testing different features and mechanics, trying to get the most fun out of it. Soon they're going to release a physical playable version 
of the game in adventure mode so every pirate holder will be able to play it for free and what they want to stress is they we've just seen a small portion of what they have planned i was even giving them ideas maybe about survival mode that they like the ideas of and this is some of the nfts that we'll be seeing for the sale. You can scroll through them on their website here and you can see how they're pretty darn detailed. I love the backgrounds on these. They are absolutely gorgeous. So pirates, at the beginning of the project, there'll be 10,000 NFT pirates generated randomly with over 200 traits. The pirates will be on the Genesis collection of men pirates. Later on, there'll be 10,000 women pirates. The pirates will have unique features. At some point, pirate holders might receive governance tokens and the ability to generate rum so the rum tokens that kind of makes sense right with pirates also the owner of the nfts female and male pirates will be able to breed new young ones and the process will require rum tokens so it's going to have a utility feature for that depending on the market needs and the popularity of the pirates of orland game will introduce new generations and right now it gives you some ideas of those traits they were talking about so there's going to be statistics or attributes that these pirates have, like pirate hats, for instance, will give plus two terror. <laughs> Eye bands will actually reduce the day vision. Telescope is going to give more sight range and a rum bottle in their hand that may provide additional rum. This is what I was talking about earlier. If you're a fast or slow runner, you'll be able to see it in the details of the pirate. They'll have in-game parameter effects based on the details of your NFT pirates. If you're skinny, you'll have 90% hit points, but at the same time, you'll have more agility, like 110 points instead of 100. It works both ways, though. The plus-sized pirates might have trouble with agility, 90%, but they'll have more than 100 hit points. So that's where you're going to be your toss-up. You might have a level that's really, really difficult and uh, to avoid being hit, and you just need more life to get through it. You may have one that you really need to get through parkour, so a skinnier character might be more effective. So that's what they're trying to drive here. We all know the game is not only based on health and agility. Other pirate characteristics will influence the game, and there'll be many traits, including but not limited to armor, range of sight, strength, defense, and attack. So yes, there's going to be monsters in the game as well. Here we can take a look at their roadmap, and naturally we're going to start with Project Launch, where the NFT is available for sale, the giveaways, treasure hunts, a community wallet with some charity donations, and finally the game demo. Then we're going to go through adventure mode, the governance token, treasure chest, which if we scroll down here, it gives you a little bit more information about all of this. The adventure mode, for instance, launch of the adventurous mo game mode with narrative <laughs> eye holders. <laughs> can finally play their own NFT pirates in the game. So the demo is just going to be something that isn't really connected to the NFTs, but when we get into the adventure mode, you'll be able to use your own NFTs in game. It says treasure chest here, which I didn't know what it is. The big update of game, treasure chest with NFT items appear on the Arland. So there's going to be some collectibles that you can get. And if we look further down this roadmap all the way past the female pirates and the rum tokens and the breeding young pirates they even have a mention of a private island nft now this is going to look something like being able to get these collectibles and store them on your own private island for collection which seems pretty cool it says here private island as nft each pirate owner can now mint a customizable island so customizable being with collectibles mint means that it's going to be a tradable nft as well and it's probably going to have some stuff to do with rum too that's just speculation of course i don't know but most of the time games like this that have land gameplay have some sort of token usage as well so it looks pretty cool future plans new game levels launching a multiplayer mode for the game releasing a mobile version of the game and way more to come so scrolling down here a little bit you see some of the art up close I think the expressions came out pretty good. This guy even got a wart on his nose. I wonder if that's an actual trait and if that's going to have any impact on game. I'm just being silly, of course. Gameplay. At the moment, we've implemented a playable game mechanic that needs to be scaled up to more levels and connected to the blockchain system. Soon, they'll have a smart, immersive internal testing phase, and later on, a selected group will be able to run external testing of the game. The next steps are releasing the game in our NFT pirate holders in adventure mode and a game demo for a bigger audience to encourage more people to dive into a world of our land. And they're showing some of the biomes or some of the islands and levels that are available. The underwater jungle sunset, which is gorgeous beach, the Ruby sea. And it looks like you could click on it. It takes a second to load, but, uh, we could see them up close. Now there's some of the interface, the underwater, 
and oh look at the sunset this is such a really really gorgeous picture huh like the lighting is is so perfect it makes me want a tequila sunrise uh the crew are to meet your expectations our team draws on broad industry experience and game dev and it what's more there are over a dozen talented crewmates ready to jump in and develop an intriguing world of Orland. We identify ourselves as pirates for a reason. We're taking over the NFT world world to roll up your sleeves and wait for us to start the ball rolling. So all of the crew members are here and their backgrounds. These guys have some extensive game dev knowledge. They've done games before in the past. And naturally, if you want to find out about any of the team members, you can specifically click on them and see their profiles on Twitter. Crypto Gardas is one of the gentlemen that I talked to in the call the other day. And these guys seem like they have a really, really good grasp of what's needed to make a fun game and are very, very open to feedback, which is great. And naturally, there's a frequently asked question section, which kind of tells you everything that Zul'jin forgot to cover in detail. No, I'm just kidding, but seriously. Pre-sale starts the 27th of October. If you want to get whitelisted, there's some details below on how to do that. The main sale is on October 29th. That's for everyone else. If you go into the whitelist section, it says that, of course, they're going to be selecting people from their community, their Discord. That's usually the case with these NFT projects. If you want to get whitelisted, you want to get involved, make sure to follow their socials, like their Twitter account, especially, and getting in their Discord community. It says here there's 300 people that are going to be whitelisted for the first ones that automatically uh, get whitelisted that join their Discord. 150 people invite the most friends to their Discord and add it to the whitelist, as well as 30 people that they choose from the Discord for pirate-themed memes, jokes, and 20 other people that share interesting ideas about the campaign. They have some ideas about the roadmap here, some information on how to buy and how that's going to go, who's behind the project, and how do you contact the Orland team. I encourage you that not only by getting involved with their Discord community and their Twitter, if you have more questions, scroll down to the bottom of this website and check out all the links, as well as the links in the description below, guys. I'm going to have all their socials linked, as well as my Discord community, where we talk about blockchain gaming and NFTs all day long. I look forward to seeing you in the comments and let me know what you think about the game, guys. Thanks so much for watching today. As always, this is Zuljan signing off and we'll see you next time.